Hello and welcome to Center of Weirdness, an Erie, Indiana podcast from the weirdos at PredictoCast. I'm Josh, and with me as always is Skinner. Hey, Skinner. Hey, Josh. Hey, all you babies. Uh, And we're going to take a weird journey back into Erie, Indiana to discuss episode nine, The Dead Letter which aired on uh, November 10th, 1991. Now, if you remember from last uh, month on the show when we were talking about The Broken Record, that aired later on in the run at the very end, um, not until much, much later in the show. Uh, And because of that, there's a really interesting parallel between The Dead Letter and And the episode uh, that we did a couple months back, Heart on a Chain. And we'll talk about that um, as we go through uh, this month's episode. But, like, I really enjoyed this one. I enjoyed how it wrapped up. It's kind of crazy, but I enjoyed how it came together. And it sort of makes sense, although it does feel like there's, like, an act completely missing. (laughs) There's a lot of uh, just setup at the start of this episode. Like there's a, there's a big verbal dump by Marshall followed by another verbal dump by Marshall. But once it gets going, it's a very classic uh, ghost story. Marshall's uh, actions and reactions in this episode are stupid. He is dumb <laughs> as a rock. But well, it feels like he's a, never encountered anything supernatural at, at this point. <laughs> There's a lot. I have, I have other ways of complaining about what he's doing and how he's reacting. But yes, that is true. The other thing is that um, just what really makes this one work. A, it's instead of taking it like you were mentioning to me off air that this the episodes for this show usually try to do an inversion of like a traditional kids or family or you know old fashioned ghost story or yeah. supernatural story. This is very. Literally kind of by the books, but it keeps – because the show has always inverted it, when it doesn't, even the characters seem a little surprised by it. And that's <laughs> it kind of it, – it for once, like so many episodes end and we're like, huh, but then why did that happen? That really wasn't in this one. Like they didn't end with like, okay, well, you this and this and this happened, but you never explained – why that happened just that oh that's a clever thing that happened this one it's it's, if you buy into the central conceit of what the ghost is and somehow oh wait wait it was a ghost ghost. it was a ghost (laughs) what i I was not aware uh then you are everything else kind of works with it if you're just kind of uh if you if you're illiterate in the ghost story uh concept which is yeah which is nice it's kind of it's kind of nice and simple it is. Uh, it it sort of it it works because it, like you said, it's not trying to completely reinvent the wheel. It's not trying to introduce like, oh, here's an underground space where all the lost things go, or oh, there's a woman who puts her kids in Tupperware and keeps them young forever, or like, and those are creative and those are kind of unique and original. But sometimes there can be something sort of refreshing about a traditional story like this. And I think that's kind of what we're getting here. I, I would bet the, the network notes or syndicated notes, whoever's producing it, like whoever, who, whoever's airing this back in the day, when they got this episode, were like, okay, good. Finally, you gave it a show that kids will actually understand. Yeah, I think like that's a I think that's a big part of it. It's like, oh, kids go, kids will get this in a way that maybe some of the others might have gone over their heads a little bit. This like also the, has the fucking my... I'm thinking mainly like the Groucho Mark stuff in the in oh, the uh, Eye Doctor one. It's like no kids are going to get that, but they'll understand. They'll kind of understand this one. 
and a character does die in this episode because that's fucking tradition <laughs> for the show. But we don't have a we don't have we don't have child death in front of. Well, we do. Well, we, we kind of do. We have it in a flashback. Yeah, so <laughs> yeah, but like we don't have like contempt. We don't have contemporarily a friend of the main character die horrifically in front of his eyes and him no, okay. have a non-reaction because if he had a reaction, we would be actually giving lip service to what actually happened in front of his face. Yes, but I think that – and because – as I as I mentioned up front, because the broken record was pushed to the end of the run, this episode aired uh, right after – uh, hard on a chain, which is the one where we met um, the uh, the the girl Melanie and Marshall, who was going by Mars at that point, <laughs> and, which he does in this episode as well. And Devin were both interested in her, and then Devin is killed by a milk truck. And in this episode, the dead letter, we find out that the ghost uh, Trip uh, McConnell, uh, unclear if he's related to Mitch or not. Um, was also killed by a milk truck. And that means that two weeks in a row, the kids who sat down to watch Erie, Indiana, had to be confronted with a child being killed by a milk truck. This is like, okay, <laughs> we've, we've enjoyed a lot of our callbacks uh, in this I show. I wonder if that's going to be a callback in the show from now on. Like, are multiple children going to be killed by milk trucks? <laughs> Well, that's the thing. Like when that happened, and they teased the character almost getting hit by a milk truck, and then actually hit by the milk truck. And we we sat and we did the entire episode. Like, isn't it crazy that this show had a character, a child, vehicular manslaughtered by a milk truck? Not in a dream, not in a in a comedic way, but like he literally in front of our main character's eyes died by hit by a milk truck, and that's and and it's. Compl- it, it as crazy as that sounds it's underplayed in the episode which is just it makes sense for this show it's bizarre but like we like we when this other character in this episode and it had to be in reaction to like them having written that last episode and then going like i can't believe we got away with that no one gave a shit about <laughs> killing this kid with a milk truck because we have the character of trip mcconnell played by Famous Pussy Posse member, Tobey Maguire. I'm not making that up. Famous Say, Spider-Man 2, Tobey Maguire. Oh, Tobey Maguire, long time before <laughs> Spider-Man 2. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> they, they have him do a flashback about when he he died. And he goes, the way I died was stupid. And in the room, <laughs> Josh and I both started yelling, milk truck, milk truck, milk truck. <laughs> because if you watch that episode... If I was in on the joke of the series, I would say they're going to reference how stupid it was they killed a character with a milk truck. <laughs> and lo and fucking behold, he goes, I was run over by a milk truck. And we cheered. <laughs> and it, what, like, of all the things to do almost in runtime, an almost immediate callback to, then the fact that in this town, Children die <laughs> by getting run over by milk trucks, and I feel like like I regularly. know regularly regularly. And I know at some point this show takes a turn where they tone it down, they add dash x, and they try to make it a more of a kids kids show. But I could absolutely see them if they were had their druthers. If druthers were had, and they could keep the show as weird and like this really like almost too. If you think about a too violent or and too twisted for kids show, then they they should be allowed to make. In nineteen ninety one, they would continually kill kids with milk trucks <laughs> in this show, and like it's so clear they think th- they thought, "Holy shit, that was stupid. Let's do it again." <laughs> yeah, I I mean I I think that that's clearly you know where they're going with it, but it's just it's so funny that it actually played out the way that we were hoping that it would. It's so great. I have a question. So the the, the setup to this episode is that the library is needs needs liquidity. It needs funds. <laughs> I didn't understand this at all. It is a small town. Erie, Indiana's library just needs cash on hand for some renovations. 
Only way to do that is to sell what they have. What they have is books. Only way to sell the books is to bring the books to World of Stuff. And st- from that point, sell it. You can't do a <laughs> – I don't know if you've been to a library. There are sections in libraries where you can buy books. You don't have to take yeah, it Yeah, they World have library stuff. sales. I've seen those before. Like It That's makes sense, old... but it's weird that you would have to take them to another establishment to do it. They didn't want and, – and we've seen little bits of the library. So it's not like they don't have a library set, but they decided they want to do it in World of Stuff. Yeah. So the world stuff has all these old books and he's like the books they haven't seen this light of the sun in decades. And then we have the baby Simon and Mars. He's called Mars again this episode. Bringing Several back times. to two episodes That's earlier. Right. I hate it. Uh, they're, they're talking about the books and now they're old books and the baby has, he's doing, he needs to look through these books. He's, he has to do a report for school. I would have thought, coloring maybe (laughs) shape recognition uh maybe remembering what numbers go between three and seven you know stuff like that the hard stuff for someone his age um but instead he has to write a a paper on he says the jackalope and its relation to the federal deficit and i wanted (laughs) to know at this point is America's Funniest People on air? Oh, you mean America's Funniest Home Videos? I don't know what no, America's, America's Funniest, Funniest People is. What America's is that? Is that the Canadian name of the show? No, no. There was a second show starring Dave Coulier called oh, America's that's Funniest right. People. I never a, watched that. So he had a segment in that show, which is super popular, trust me, where they had the jackalope and it would run around. Yes. And they okay, had... never mind. I did watch this because I remember the jackalope stuff. You're you totally right. F- for as some fast reason, as fast can be, you'll never catch me. Yeah, for some reason, I conflated that like as if it were a segment on America's Funniest Home Videos, like that he would just come on and do like a weird segment or he guest hosted <laughs> or something because of the because they're all it's all full house. Yeah, and, and then Carmen and then uh, and then D- um, John Stamos had America's funniest guitars. <laughs> it's just a video. America's funniest Beach Boys. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so he like I, I just want I was just curious like is that a reference to that to that sketch on that show to try to be like we all know you guys love the Jackalope kids and. Right next well, to me, it was of a it was uh, on the air. It did air from uh, 1990 to 1994, so it is possible would that am- that was a big part of the social consciousness. I think it was. I think this is exactly this was them trying to get that zeitgeist, that coolier zeitgeist um, of of the moment, just by mentioning the jackalope. God, that's weird. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I I. I I just recharged your memory on America's Funniest People. Yeah, I looked up the thing. I remember the logo. I remember like I remember everything now as it comes back. And there's even a picture when you search for it. There's even a picture of him with his with his hands up doing the little horns. Um, And it's just like wow. Yeah. Uh, 1991 might as well been 70 years ago at this point. That is true. And I was wrong about uh, John Stamos. His show was America's Funniest Mercies. <laughs> Did he have mercies? He had lots of mercies. <laughs> well, oh, that's, that's the dumbest joke we've ever <laughs> done on the show. <laughs> Any of I had to shows. go back to it because I thought it was worth it, but it wasn't. Um, so, where where were we in this show? Uh, uh, so he yeah, the, the jackalope. They, they that's right. He finds the, the letter. Yeah, the letter falls out of an old book. They immediately toss the book. That's the book's not important, but an old letter comes in and it has an address on it. And the baby rightfully says, "We should just mail the letter," which would yeah. have saved us for the entire episode. Yeah, instead but there would be no show. As a federal offense, we have Marshall signing it. No way, we're going to open the letter. He opens the letter and then wind <laughs> blows around and then he doesn't actually open the letter. Well, like, I don't like <laughs> considering that he does he doesn't put two and two together that the opening the letter created this 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 old timey kid to show up. Why did he stop reading the letter? I don't know. Mar- like like I already said, Marshall is kind of a dumbass in this episode. Like it feels like this is his first 
weird thing that he's ever experienced, but there, but it's clearly not. And it, it's so like the way he reacts to it and the way that it takes him until the second commercial break to realize that trip is a ghost is like, how are you this dumb? I don't understand. Cause, cause trip shows up dressed like completely out of time, like an old, old timey photo. It's, Toby Maguire, 16 years old. He's sitting on top of a bookshelf, impossibly high. And here's the thing. Here's what really just like going back, knowing what we do about how the story all wraps together. He goes, we have the narrator, which I never understand what tense Marshall <laughs> is narrating things because I think it's got to be after everything has occurred. But this is where it, it breaks down for me. It makes sense that it's after because the next scene he tells us what's going to happen and then it happens, which is weird. But he says, every instinct in my body told me that this kid was bad news and I needed to get at, have nothing to do with him. It turns out Trip is a nice guy. And all he wants to do is have the letter go to his first his his first love yeah, and it's a, the, it's a very and, and, simple and, and, thing that trip could have just said hey here's what i need and if marshall had given him just a fucking second he could have been done with it in no time one sec yeah in fact to the point like there's a couple times where if simon just if, if simon let's blame simon here if marshall just said <laughs> full sentences or didn't didn't cut off people or explained what he was doing when he was doing it to people so ne- nothing in this episode would have happened, but like he, he, the, the Marshall who was narrating it has been through the whole thing and he would know uh, as much as he gives shit to trip the entire episode, there's nothing wrong with trip. He's just a kid who died, who wants his letter given to his true love. That's all he is. He's not a trickster. He's not doing anything he has powers, which I don't understand why he has powers, but like, no, those are very ill defined. <laughs> and he never hypnotizes like anyone else except for, um, Marshall's family, which he could have just hypnotized either the baby or Marshall and made him do it. anyways. But like, he knows there's nothing like, it's not a malevolent thing yet. All his narration is, trip is bad news it's like no dude you're the dick you're the dick and you just have to shut up and just just listen for a second and if you've been through what you've been through how did you not know this is a ghost how did you not know this was a ghost yeah it, it's it's a it's a faulty premise because it feels like from the time that trip shows up to because i think even in the narration marshall sort of uh wonders he's like is this a ghost is it a an angel is it some alien or something like he has all these ideas about what trip is when he first meets it but he never seems to entertain initially that trip is a ghost at first even after like some weird shit happens he... even after even after trip uh enters his dream <laughs> yeah after he appears in a broken plate he does, does he not know entertain he's a ghost that he... at that point yet no because he doesn't know he's a ghost until mary's old mary tells him that trip is dead oh that's right you're right which well, once again makes it so that it what always seems like is that his narration is either five steps ahead or five steps behind what's actually happening it's never <laughs> it's never soup it's never particularly concurrent with what's happening nor is it exactly consistently uh after everything that's happened like a, a post script type thing it's they don't need marshall to narrate these shows i don't know why they do it I, like the next I think it's just comes- a i think it's just an in, uh, like a a way for it to tie it more to like the kid audience like oh this is what this kid is thinking you know like this is what he's going through and that relates him to me maybe i don't know i i think uh, to me it always comes off like they want to make sure we, we know that uh that marshall is cool and irreverent so 
to give him more lines, considering this is a show where True. to set up cer- certain things, Marshall doesn't have to be in every scene because the mystery is the actual story of the, ep- story of the episode. So sometimes Marshall isn't in every scene. So Marshall has to narrate them. So we know the cool kid with the cool haircut is always being irrele- irrelevant, re- irreverent to something because he's <laughs> he's also he, irrelevant to the story he, he, sometimes. He often is irrelevant. I mean, like he's 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 our he's our Sonic the Hedgehog into this world because it's 1991, baby. We got to go fast. Speaking of going fast, he he he's gonna come home and Trip is already gonna be there. Well, he Having says hypnot- he says to Trip like Trip is like, oh, I need you to do something, and he's basically like, no. And then he puts the letter down, and then Trip is like, oh, it's not that easy. And then he makes the letter spin around, and we're like, okay, I, what's gonna happen? And then Marshall gets home, and he's already in his house doing stuff. And you're like, did I miss something? Is there a part of the episode that's missing? What's What's confusing about it is that so it's almost like a it's probably a mystery. Like he, we see his parents talking to somebody and saying a slur over and over again oh well this was 91 (laughs) and they uh you know this this word um was was not considered I, i mean it was probably offensive to those who took it that way and maybe there are plenty of people now that identify you know i i think the i think the Correct term is is like Romani, um, I but so. I, but I'm but even... yeah, they they say that I'll 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 say it one time. They say the word gypsy a lot in this episode, uh, lot. referring and I don't even, to trip. having having watched the whole thing. Why it doesn't it doesn't make sense why that's there. Like I don't understand what like I don't he's understand just a kid what in that town. is. He's just he's just yeah. a suburb kid from nineteen twenty nine. <laughs> well they're like oh you've moved around a lot or something and it's like i don't know if like, that's it's, true is that are, are they trying to make us think like maybe he's some kind of weird magician kid because like we come back and he's hypnotized uh all of marshall's family to make them to, they, they love him and want him to stay there uh this but we only see them talking at first before we marshall comes around the corner and sees that it's trip they're talking to yeah, but thankfully, before they even show them talking to everyone, Marshall, the narrator, has told us that he's done this. Yeah, <laughs> which is no why surprise it's, there. It's why it seems so disjointed. Like, okay, at some point, does someone think like, okay, when we show this scene, kids won't get what's going on. So let's tell everybody what exactly is going on. But like I was wondering, like I was like, okay, so are, are they trying to say that word? So like they're like, ooh, he's a magic that, and like, and that means something bad to him. But like, no, like we know he's go- a ghost. We know as the audience he's a ghost. He's dressed up like we know he's a ghost. I don't know if Marshall doesn't. We know we know he is. And <laughs> this always drives me crazy now for some reason. Like we have Cindy going on like, oh, I work for the high school newspaper, which she has now consistently done. And I wanted to interview for our you for our fashion uh, thing because she wants to do a whole spread on him. A whole and spread. She puts a like, weird no, emphasis on that. And it feels like his entire family just wants to fuck this kid. They all seem like they want to fuck this kid who's going to end up in a pussy posse. If you don't know <laughs> what that is, Google it. Um, but it's it's very weird because there's no reason, knowing what happens, for him to have done this. There is no yeah. he doesn't need to he doesn't need to stay with Marshall. So he doesn't need to hypnotize his family into tricking them into letting him stay because A, he's dead and a ghost, and he can go into Marshall's dreams. And he the, Marshall's family isn't part of the plot of the episode. Well, I think if if that were going to be a thing about him using the family to like uh to get Marshall to do what he wanted. They needed to be more, either more forceful, or he needed to be doing that with more people around Marshall. So it should have been he should like have been also, or, he should have also been doing it to Simon. Yes, or it should have been a thing of like he's already got these people under his thrall, which he's just a nice boy who died prematurely. So why is he using magic? Um, but it, it should have been like him putting the family under his the, some spell, and then them kind of badgering Marshall to do. What trip what wanted? Wanted instead that yeah. because they want because they want to 
make it a full 28 minutes or whatever the fuck it is. They, they have to make it so like you think for a second, but what does Trip want? Of course he wants the letter delivered. But they have to make him say, yeah. okay, we know if you figured out the mystery that Trip is a ghost, maybe he's malevolent. Why is he taking over the family? Turns out for no reason. And then they're they're all in Trip. And then Trip asks, asks Mars. He calls him Mars for the rest of the episode. Yeah. And he like, he, I was sure he was going to call him. I'm like, okay, bro, I'm just going to fuck your sister. <laughs> and then after that, your mother. And after that, your father. Well, the like, dad does have this weird line about like he can stay for dinner, and then uh, and then he can stay the night. H- hell, he can stay till he's eighteen if he wants to. And I'm like, what? <laughs> what? 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 Why? And then Marshall basically blows him off, like like in a way that you would blow off a regular human being who you didn't come home to, sitting in your house unexpectedly having hypnotized your entire family like he, the way he acts he keeps arguing with his family like i don't know him piss off leave me alone why are you guys and like never like oh this is i don't feel safe because this guy somehow got in my house and somehow hypnotized my family like he takes it like he acts like okay i met this kid who can hypnotize my family that sucks yeah. but i'll <laughs> i guess i'll do the dishes and go to bed it's like this guy broke into your house, got home before you did, is dressed like an old timey kid, can seemingly float, and he hypnotized your entire family. And when you left, he had a letter in his hand and he let he caught it on fire like he's gambit. <laughs> and then he just goes, and, and but like to hit in his mind, all trip is is a bozo. Yeah, he goes. He, oh, he, he's, he's just some bozo. No, some bozo doesn't break into your house and hypnotize your family into loving him, and doesn't appear mysteriously in your reflection in the window and scare or, you. Yes, or the, and then like you look at a broken, you, you drop a plate and it breaks, and his face is in the plate, and he's still <laughs> like, oh, "Guess I'll go to bed," and he's still surprised when he turns out to be dead. Yeah, no, I, I, the one thing I want to talk about though is when he's washing his dish and he's mad at his family. They're like, "Oh, I wish Trip could have stayed for dinner," and he's like, "Ah, he's not my friend. He's just some weirdo." And he goes to wash his plate and he sees this reflection of Trip and it startles him and he drops the plate and he's like, "Oh, it's Trip! It's Trip in the window!" And then his mom is like, "Oh, he must be outside. Let's go!" And then his entire family runs outside to find him. And I was like, "I like that element. That's funny." Also, I believe it's the last time we see his family. They're they're at the very end of the episode complaining of smelling of garlic. Okay, but like it, but it really, it really like besides the fact that that the fam the family in his dreams who who aren't real are also hypnotized. Um, it really hits the hammer home of like why did he hypnotize them? Yeah, it it's not necessary. Like it, it totally is un needed but i mean i i think if they were going to do it 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 just needed they don't have enough time to do more with it and so i think that's either they need to do more with it or not do it yeah but it it, it could have been fun if it had a point and i wish they i wish they had figured out how to like explain like you know like the very end when he shows up with like in in the place if like marshall had just yelled across the room why did you hypnotize my family He's like, well, oh, you know, I was bored. What, what would have made sense is if he had come, he had come home and found that guy there, and they're like, "Oh, Marshall, your friend stopped by, and we told him to wait for you to get here." And then Marshall kind of freaked out, and he's like, "He's not my friend. I don't know him. Get out of here!" And then his family was like, "What is wrong with you?" And like treated him like you would treat someone who just yelled at a guest in your home, and not acted like they were in love with this guy. Like that would that would be something because then it would be like, "Oh, you know, Marshall is just being a little jerk and not, uh, you know." treating this this person whoever it is like a person and it's not that his family has been you know uh hypnotized by a ghost here's the reason why it happened i think it's funny i think it's well funny it, it is do. and it is funny so then he he he, 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 he having had this day which is always what what, what impresses, me, impresses me about mars is that no matter what happens he's so sonic the hedgehog that he's like whatever 
I'm just going to go to bed in my, my regular sweater and, and jeans like I, any, any other day and just I'll, I'll go to sleep, not assuming that these things that keep, keep breaking into my house and haunting me and going wherever I go will do anything to me once I'm in bed. Like, like the, the, the menacing things in this town, the milk trucks and the ghosts and the evil demons and stuff, they know I got to get my, my eight hours sleep. So it's cool. Like I, I, I got, I got no worries. So he, he goes he to bed. Mentions, get, yeah. He goes to sleep, but he mentions like, Oh, I had another one of my weird dreams. Have we ever seen anything about a weird dream in this show? Up I to don't this point? think so. I can't remember I anything. So. I don't. And I think that would stick out. Like it, it seems like the kind of thing they would lean on, but they don't, at all yeah that he has so he, like weird prophetic dreams or or the things of like things to come or something like that but nothing what i look what okay, what i like with this dream is so he says i had this dream i think it was insp- it was i had it because i was having feelings of not wanting to grow up because he's a toys R Us kid <laughs> but that has nothing to do <laughs> with whatever's going on. Maybe like maybe you're trying to tie like you know trip never got to grow up. But I think that's really what played. it is. Yeah, but, but it doesn't it's, really it's very, work. It doesn't really work. We see someone drive by with a, a a dead crow wearing a diaper and whatever. Well, it's it's then, the lady. It's the lady that we eventually marry. Uh, it's Mary. It's Mary. Um, and we have the, the his family are all on a uh, Wizards of Oz bike. They're all on one the three. <laughs> seated bike in the air and there's they, and they're still in love with trip in this dream of course and uh sleaze bag simon is back oh yes he, yes <laughs> we have simon dressed up in a suit his hair slicked back and he's got a cigar and he's a he is just he loves being a jerk he's a he's, he's great i love sleaze bag baby the sleaze baby he needs the to be only in more way- episodes Yes, the only way it could have been better is if he also had the mustache that he wears later in the episode. The mustache also has come back. And then Trip comes in and goes, cool dream, what he says. And <laughs> even though all these things have been kind of tied to Trip's story, uh, Simon goes, no, get out of here. This is my dream. This, like, like, like he acts like, oh, I dream about this stuff all the time. I dream about crows and diapers. My family's on bikes and this old lady who I have never met all the time. What are you doing here? This isn't a dream that you made. You're invading my dream. And I'm like, sh- shouldn't he be more like, oh, this is why I'm having this weird dream is because it's you're creating it. But he doesn't take that tact at all. And then Trip basically says like, fucker, I can come to your, like, you can't get away from me I'm everywhere. Like, and at this point, and he says, like, he's like, I need you to give that. He finally gets, get, now that he's asleep and in his dream and he's in his, the baby's a sleaze ball and there's nothing he can do. He can know where he can go. He finally shuts up long enough for Trip to say, by the way, fucker, I just need you to give that letter to the person. I've been trying to have it delivered for years or whatever. And he's like, oh, I don't have the litter anymore. It's like, well, don't worry. When you wake up, it'll be on your on your uh your nightstand. He startles awake. We get to see a lot of his thighs. And there's the letter. At this point, Marshall does not think he's a ghost. No, I, I wanna I wanna go back though really quick, because when he sees Simon in his dream, and S- Simon says, I'm tired of being second banana on this show and marshall goes what show and i wonder if because this is the start of the this show was a show yeah because the end of this the series is about a um is basically a meta episode where marshall finds out that there is a tv show called erie indiana and he realizes that everyone is an actor and that he is supposedly an actor as well. And I wonder if they're planting the seeds for that, for the finale right here. I would imagine that in some ways that ending is more in tune with the start of this show that they would have had that plan from the beginning. Probably. Maybe like not the full details or like maybe it's not going to be the last, last episode because maybe they were hoping for 
a second season or a, yeah, it's, it's it's basically one point five seasons. The show is, um, but I can imagine that that was probably in their mind in some way. It's what's a the first drop of that, and I would like to think that, that they they when that episode comes that the actor who is portraying Simon when he's out of character is dressed like sleazebag Simon, where his hair slicked back in a cigar <laughs> suit. That's his normal attire. He comes to set like that, and they're like, all right, sir, uh, it's time to put you in your in your uniform. And then he's, like, putting out cigars on people's arms and stuff. Like, you know, those old cartoons where they have a baby ca- character, but then the, the, the episode ends, he, like, has a, oh, gruff, gruff oh, like voice. Like Roger, like, uh, like Roger Rabbit. Roger Rabbit, yeah. <laughs> Except for it's Simon. <laughs> Uh, so he finally, uh, realizes what he has to do and, uh, he goes with Simon to the house, uh, on the letter, the address on the letter to deliver it so he can get rid of this ghostly figure that's haunting him for one day. Um, and he goes to to the home of, uh, Mary B. Carter on the, uh, on the letter. I have to read you this really interesting bit of trivia about this um, that's listed on IMDb. So Tripp's letter to Mary has a two-cent stamp. This is the first-class one-ounce letter rate at the time. Um, the The stamp on the letter uh, was issued on, on 20, uh, 25 February 1929, so it would have been uh, around the right era. The letter is addressed to Mary B. Carter at 326 Elizabeth Barrett Browning Boulevard, Erie, Indiana. When Simon and Marshall go to the house to deliver the letter, the numbers 326 are seen next to the front door. Is this interesting trivia to you? No. <laughs> Why is that in the trivia section? I don't know. And Wow, the address on the letter matched the address on the house. Fucking mind-blowing. This is, this is why... <sighs> yes, this is interesting. People- this is, I mean, God, this is... I clicked it. It's like, there on IMDb Thank now. you. I mean, this is <laughs> this is why we, we are, people are not giving enough appreciation for the the post office and they've, in the days we have now, because <laughs> oh, they don't no. understand that, like, fucking, the amazing magic of you put, the address you put in the letter, they know to get, get to that address. <laughs> I it's, it's very lucky for our good friend uh, Mars here that this family has never moved away in 60 years. Yeah. That her whole like family line just stuck around Erie. And she didn't apparently go got on married. To... She got married six times and is still in the same house. That is also very interesting. Maybe she was just the, the top dollar breadwinner in all of her relationships. And uh, <laughs> that's why she never moved out because they just moved in with her and then she kicked them out when it didn't work. I like that a lot. I mean, that's probably what it is. So they, they knock on the door. Uh, 326, again, is the number that was on the letter, and it's also on the house so that they know that they're at the right place. Amazing. Beautiful piece of trivia. Um, and a young girl answers the door, and they say, oh, are you Mary Carter? And she says, oh, yeah, it's me. And clearly, again, Marshall, you fucking idiot. A ghost from the 1920s. Well, I guess he doesn't know he's a ghost yet. Still, that's right. That's why I said like, at the end of the stream where he entered his dream, and then and then when he woke up, the letter that he had he had thrown away was at on his nightstand. Per what the ghost said, he still at that point does not realize, and in fact, when he finds out, is shocked by the fact that this is a ghost. That's he true. Is- like so, it feels like it feels like if you are in Marshall's shoes like if you live in a weird his giant town, shoes his, his giant giant, shoes, giant shoes size that we shoes. see um if you live in this weird town that you have you know come to realize that it is it is full of weird oddities crazy things that happen um killer milk trucks uh, kids who are sealed in 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 uh plastic tubs to keep their youth, uh, evil dogs, all kinds of stuff that's going on here. If you know all of this, your immediate, immediate thought should be, oh, this is probably a ghost situation. This letter looks very old. This kid is dressed very old. He's entering my dreams. 
there's probably something supernatural happening here. I shouldn't just assume that a young girl who opens the door is going to be the the person that I'm supposed to deliver this letter to. Like, it seems so baffling to me that he has no, like, he has no thought on it other than until he learns that the guy's dead. Here's, here's another thing that baffles me. So we have, so this is, she goes, oh, this letter is actually for Mary C. Carter. No, but Mary, Mary B. Carter. B. Carter. I'm Mar- She's I'm Mary C. C. Carter. And her mother, as you said to me, was Mary A. Carter. <laughs> well, but, this is her aunt. So it's not even like, how does that work? Well, it d- doesn't Did Mary doesn't not know. have any kids? Well, she maybe she didn't because she didn't marry Tripp, except for she married six other people. That is but, true. But maybe, like you know, in real life, you can't have chilt people unless you have true love. That's how that's how sperm works. Um, the 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 most amazing part to me is so this 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 girl who does not know who who Mars is, right? He is a stranger who has come and said, "Here's a letter. Oh, it's from my elderly aunt, you child. That you must have found." And the, the letter looks old. It looks very old. He could have said it fell out of a book. It has her name on it. Can you give it to her? And she can you get to Mary Carter? He's like, oh, that's not me. It's my my aunt who's upstairs. Here's how what would happen next. If she did not kick him out and he just said it was a book, old book from the library, and it fell out. If he ever just mentions this, it, everything works a little better for himself. But what she should say to him, and I maybe I'm saying this because we live in the the world of the pandemic. I don't want to date this episode, but we do. And it won't even, <laughs> well, we it's won't here date forever. It, we won't date it for a couple, couple of years. Um, it's say, thanks for this contactless delivery. Leave it on the stoop. <laughs> I will wash it. I will, I will let it sit for a while. And for, so if it does disinfect, disinfect, and then I will bring it upstairs and give it to my aunt. Myself. I would not say, okay, kid, I don't know. How about instead you physically come into the house and come into the bedroom of the old lady to give her this letter? Why did she bring him in? Well, because the show has to happen. I mean, I I think a lot of our questions are answered by, well, it's a TV show, so we have to do it. I just, this one just really drove me crazy that Marshall would just never say to anybody, the letter fell out of an old book. Yeah, I think that's could the show could still happen if he told them how he came into like possession of the letter. Like, oh, I was cleaning out a book and it fell out and it had your name on it. So I wanted to bring it to you because I didn't know what it was and I wanted you to have this letter that was obviously intended for you. Like, yes. it's, and I was it's, going to oh, um, this little kid next to me, this little baby, this little toddler, wanted me to, to deliver it anyways. It was his plan. He wanted it from the very start just to put it in the mail so it could deliver to work. Oh, I thought you were going to say this little toddler over here wanted me to open the letter and read it. And I said, no, sir, we will not do such a thing. <laughs> the exact opposite of what happened. This little child here doesn't know about felony, um, <laughs> about felonies and opening mail that doesn't belong to you. <laughs> so, yeah. I they, wish he they... tried to sell her something while she's, he's there, too. He's, he's an old lady. <laughs> Do they take um, – I'm pretty sure that the woman that they encounter is also the woman they saw in the bookstore, right? They I do see her in the bookstore at the very beginning when they're looking through the books. Probably. I mean she ends up dying there. So she, was, she has to be a a, a, a frequent pr- uh, person who goes to the world of stuff. That is true. Was, um, was world of stuff in the flashback as world of stuff? It might have been. Because he had to been die there near there. And the, yeah. the book, his letter had to end up in a book in the library, not in World. Anyway, that's true. Okay, so yeah, they go, they go upstairs. Um, they meet Mary Carter. She is uh, this older woman in a bed, and she's kind of seems a little invalid. But as soon as they say they have a letter from Trip McConnell, she sits up and she's like, "What are you talking about?" And she's just like real, real brassy. And she grabs the letter from them and she rips it up and she calls them. What does she call them? Like rat bags or something like something like that. She says she's going to pound them into mush and then she starts smashing her own stuff with her cane. (laughs) She starts breaking her own things. (laughs) Brilliant. (laughs) Brilliant cell phone there. And she goes, 
he should have been my husband. That's right. They were 16 yeah. years old. They were 16. Years okay. Old. So here is the here is the the bad like or the faulty premise here is that when we when we learn how Trip McConnell died and that he was on his way to deliver this letter to Mary, that implies that she doesn't know how he feels about her. Yet she is already proclaiming that he was supposed to be her husband he should have been her husband so i guess they had this weird like mutual attraction but neither knew it across like maybe like across the the church pews giving each other looks across the aisles of world of stuff while they while they uh both sucked on their cold phosphates yes as they they got their egg creams (laughs) that's right i just I don't know. Uh, so I, I kind because of, I was so excited with the milk truck. Um, was there any explanation given to how his letter that he was br- going to give to her ended up in a book in the library? I think it's in a book that he is carrying with him, and then he gets so hit I, by a milk truck, so, and then that book just gets, I guess, out of it gets turned. They didn't do evidence lockers back then in the twenties, so I guess it just went get, to the like, library. All crime, all crime scene books become par- property of the state, and thus the library. I guess so. Like, oh, this one's got a little blood on it, but it's fine. Maybe I got to go to the library and like, where, if, once they're, you know, if we open for general traffic, uh, to say like, hey, where's your section of old books that were held by kids who were killed in car accidents? Well, they do. They do say at the beginning that the books they were selling were from the basement and they hadn't seen uh, daylight in, in many decades. So if I you guess... Want, okay. Okay, here, if they want to make a lot of money to, to for renovations off book sales, uh, books not being very expensive, you, you wouldn't make a whole lot of money. Um, so Harry Potter books or whatever it is back then, <laughs> Dragonlance books, Forgotten Realms, uh, books by racist uh, old uh, sci-fi writers. I don't know. Brian Something. Jock's Just, Red Wall series. <laughs> the Red Wall series. Everyone loves that. This anything. Robert Zelaney, Michael Moorcock, R.L. Stein. Who's that? R.L. Stein. In this I'm just giving you shit. There's no that R.L. Stein in this universe has every author that we have except for R.L. Stein. It does have Christopher <laughs> Pike though. <laughs> P.M. Klein wrote the Goose Flesh series. Could you? That is the most disgusting se- idea uh, name for a possible series I could possibly think of. Goose flesh. <laughs> I want. I got. I. I really want to read this. Me and my chums in 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 the in the seventh grade would really sit down and read some goose flesh books. That's what we're gonna do. Uh, that's our next podcast. Skinner is we're going to take Goosebumps books and we're gonna rewrite them just enough and then read them and call them the Goose Flesh series. <laughs> Man, if you if we could have come up with one idea that's even less attractive marketable or even like palatable to another human being than covering crazy towns hit song butterfly line by line uh making a podcast even called the goose flesh series is right there instead of monster blood it'll be monster plasma (laughs) i hate this idea so much night of the living dummy it'll be (laughs) night of the living idiot no uh <laughs> don don of the ventriloquist it's a little this inversion is a great, this is a great bit <laughs> um it'll I mean, be you, you, you gotta pick you gotta pick one you, you have an idea for first and then say it out loud yeah my instead of my hairy adventure it'll be my furry fantasy <laughs> that'll be a very different book for adults only <laughs> the goose flesh original my furry fantasy <laughs> i hope that's i hope that's some asmr MR for somebody right now this will give <laughs> this book will give your dick goose flesh <laughs> oh. you won't last you won't last five minutes reading this book <laughs> Amazingly, the books are just full of centaurs. <laughs> um, 
yeah, so uh, at this point, they find out that he's dead <laughs> from <laughs> from Mary, who screams at them, and then they, she, he is shocked. Yeah, they're <laughs> they're blown away by the fact that this kid is dead. So they start putting garlic all around their their house, and uh, Simon is like, "Isn't this only for vampires?" And this is when Marshall is like, "Vampires, ghosts, whatever," and it's like, "No." You are supposed to know about this stuff by this point. <laughs> and then Trip you have a whole evidence like, locker in your attic full of weird stuff. And he has a vampire head up in there. And then Trip shows up and is like, this is for vampires, you idiot. And Trip <laughs> died in 1929. They hadn't yeah. even invented garlic back then. <laughs> yeah, that didn't, that didn't roll around until 1932, I think. Um so yeah, Trip shows up in their in their uh, attic, and he's very sad, and he gets very sad, and and basically snow starts pouring onto him, ghostly snow, and, and this freaks it Marshall the fuck out. Yeah. Oh, we didn't mention shit. we didn't mention that Mary gets mad and rips up the letter, um, and he tells he tells Trip this, and Trip you know, materializes a new letter and is like, you know, you have to get this to her. That's all I really need. And so Marshall and Simon uh, devise a two pronged plan to Operation uh, lovesick. (laughs) uh, Oh, that's what it is. Yeah. Operation lovesick. So they, they go back to her house and they have, (laughs) they have Simon pose as like a, census taker or like i i he's just he's he's, he's he, a survey taker in yeah general. survey like, taker that's what i meant yeah back what back when we had malls sometimes these people would would cost you back in the day i almost got a free box of uh blueberry egos from one of these people <laughs> well they couldn't have been good if you got them in the mall we're not going to talk about the story about me doing a survey while my wife got a haircut and ending up with a box of blueberry egos were they warm yes were they like they didn't have them in like a cooler or anything? No, they just gave you a box of random. I answered question to my li- about my, how much I liked or disliked egos and with what flavors I enjoyed. And as I left, I was given a box of warm, unrefrigerated blueberry oh egos. God. Did you eat so them? that when my wife my wife left the for getting her haircut, she came out and in this mall that has no grocery store. I was holding a box of Eggos <laughs> without a bag. <laughs> did you eat them? Uh, we didn't have a lot of money at the time, so yes. Oh, okay. Well, I mean, if they were, I mean, they obviously I didn't toasted them kill like you. Immediately. Like, I mean, like, I, I know they're called Eggos, but it's not like they have a lot of raw eggs in them. <laughs> Is that why they're called Eggos? Why don't you look it up? <laughs> I'm learning so much right now. I'm being reminded of America's funniest people. I'm uh <laughs> Why let's see. Why are they called egos? Let's see. Um No. Uh oh, because of the egg flavor, customers mm. called them egos. <laughs> Just like they didn't even creams. start they didn't even start that way. They were just a random frozen waffle that went to the supermarket, and uh, I don't know what they were called before they were called Eggos. Could you could you imagine like just among your friends like go, oh, mm, these waffles sure are eggy. I like to call them Eggos. How about you, chum? Oh, me as well. <laughs> I enjoy my Eggos. All right, so that's They're a thing. Deep that, egg uh, flavor. <laughs> Trip should have been talking like that. Trip talks like Tobey Maguire in Spider-Man too. <laughs> yes, he should have been like, "Hey, boyo." <laughs> does he like? Does he? Ma- I think he makes more of an attempt to be uh, uncontemporary in Pleasantville. <laughs> uh, okay, this uh, I just found out that the the uh, people who invented uh, Egos, I don't know what they were called. It was developed by the Dorsa brothers, so I'm guessing they were called Dorsas. At some point, uh, they also developed Eggo potato chips. Oh, that sounds awesome. And they were produced, all of this was produced in a plant and factory on Eggo Way. 
the problem is that they didn't mean for the chips to be Eggo flavored. It's just it happened to be that you, by law, if you name your road Eggo way, you have to make everything on that street the Eggo way. For Halloween, instead of candy, they would give out bags of Eggo potato chips. <laughs> Those bags are now worth one thousand dollars each. <laughs> I want some Eggo potato chips. I want to try them. I'm very, I am very okay. curious now what those are about. If we will, if if you can hook up our friend Josh Hollis with Eggo potato chips, we will, we will, I will go and buy a post office box for you to send it to. So Ooh, you they also made, where, they also made mayonnaise. <laughs> this is getting better by the second, and I'm getting oh, hungry. Oh, and by I the found second. and I found the actual name. What was it called? Froffles. <laughs> Why would you give up such a great name? Frozen waffles. Froffles. <laughs> <laughs> and the customers, because of the egg flavor, uh, called them Eggos, and the Dorsa brothers believed that the customer is always right, so they changed their name. <laughs> Uh, at any point in your life, have you ever ate an Eggo and thought, mmm, Eggy? I no. guess not, because you did not, you, you did not know why it was called Eggos. <laughs> I, yeah, I guess not. And apparently millennials love these. <laughs> Stranger Things, you know. They did really help that. That's right. Millennials were really... all about killing, uh, killing numerous other businesses, but Eggo waffles rise into the top. <laughs> And yet they have not brought back the Eggo mayonnaise. <laughs> or chips. <laughs> or ch- you could dip the ch- Eggo chips into Eggo ma- I want Eggo mayonnaise on top of Eggo chips on top of Eggo waffles. Fuck that is off. my dream. <laughs> All right. We have to get back to this episode and finish it up. We've had it's <laughs> almost numerous over. It detours like, it, about it our cool. On, like, e. It ends like E.T. Yeah, it, it, uh, oh, that is true. Uh, they... They finally they read the letter to her. They get inside. She threatens Marshall with a gun and uh, comes forward. He reads the letter out to her and she believes him some for some reason. And so they sneak her out of the house. They take her to the world of stuff. She rides on Marshall's handlebars and it looks like E.T. She's got a little shawl wrapped around her head. This little old lady. And they get to the world of stuff and. She uh, is upset because Trip isn't there, and she thinks, "Oh, he did. He didn't come because I'm old. Because uh, you know, I'm not what he remembers." And finally, Trip appears in in ghostly form, and he sees her, but he sees her as she looked to him when they were when they were children, and uh, they they approach each other, and he you know asks her how she's or he she asks. Uh, how he's been. She's like, oh, you look great. How have you been? He's like, well, I've been kind of dead. And uh, and he's like, how about you? And she's like, well, I got kind of old. <laughs> and, and this is a, this is the point where there's, there's, we're face-to-face, Tony McGuire and this older actress, and all Josh will say is, I need them to kiss. <laughs> I didn't say I need them to. <laughs> he says, I, just I said, can't it finish looks like they're until about they to. kiss. <laughs> that, well... All right, he could fair. not last five minutes, <laughs> is what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, I needed to see this 16-year-old make out with this 60-year-old woman. Um, I'm sure that does it for somebody. Uh, granny shaggers and whatnot. Uh, but Bro, so, this, episode of, uh, this episode has been brought to you by Brett. <laughs> by, what, who, who do we feel, which one do we feel, which video service do we feel safest uh, being our sponsor for this episode. Oh, who, has, um, who, who, who would go far enough, but not far, not too far? Uh, poor nub. It's for <laughs> <laughs> that's so that's where all the goose flesh <laughs> episodes right. end up. Um. So, yeah they they uh they they make up and <laughs> not make out though. They, they don't make out. No, and then the the camera kind of just pans away because he gives her this little flower off of his lapel and the camera just sort of pans down to the lapel and then that's sort of the end of the scene like I don't how do like, like do Marshall and, and Simon leave that would have been so awkward 
wouldn't it? Like the eternity teller and go like, uh, uh, can we go? Not, like, they don't need us anymore, right? Can we? Could, but she can't oh, get home by herself. We She's didn't even lady. talk. We we got distracted by your ego story and then ego mayonnaise and chips. We didn't talk about the fact that Simon wears a cute little mustache, pretending to be an old man taking a survey. Oh man, that's like I, I want to change the 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 episode art for this episode just to his face with the mustache. It's beautiful. <laughs> It needs and to come back. He needs to do this. He needs to do this like at least every second episode. He should have kept that mustache the rest of the episode. That would have been very funny if he'd worn it all the way to World of Stuff, and then Marshall could have like nudged him, and he'd forgotten that he had it on. That would have been a funny joke. It would. It, it was perfectly matched to his to his hair. So he's had it for a while, and he's he, he made sure to get the right kind. <laughs> <laughs> so they uh they they make up and then the next morning marshall's family says everything smells and tastes like garlic which doesn't make any sense unless he has put garlic in their food and in their cereal like uh, yeah i know also, garlic is strong but like uh, is it that strong like, like if you have just like cloves that aren't open they don't they're not super pungent where you would, your whole house would smell like Yeah, it. exactly. So I think he must have crushed up garlic and put it in their food. I hope it was it was one last like prank by our prankster king trip. Who's, <laughs> and who, uh, you know, hypnotized his family for no reason. Yeah, and Simon runs in and says, "Oh, you got to come down to world of stuff. Something crazy's happening." So they go down I to world this, of stuff. I love this because <laughs> his, his reaction is like Cool. Something cool happened. Come check it out. <laughs> and they go there, and it seems clear that they they cut to an ambulance where uh, the uh, Mary Carter is being loaded up, and the the ambulance driver, not our twins, which I was hoping for, but it's not the it's not the twins. Uh, he says, "Well, I guess her heart gave out," and it's like, "Uh, did she just was she just found dead on the floor of World of Stuff, and they still yes. open to the public?" So she's still wearing – from the feet and we see in the ambulance, which has nice windows for us, like she's still That's wearing weird. her white night- <laughs> she, She's wearing her, her white nightgown. So she died that night. Yeah. Simon and Marshall left her there and she died. Think about that. And then Marshall – and then Simon was like, hey, cool. Come check it out. She's dead. Well, I mean, but it's just wild to me that they opened the store to the public that day. They're like, yeah, it's fine. This old lady just dropped dead in our store. We don't know how she got here. We don't know why she was here, but it's fine. Just open everything up. How did they get in there? Oh, that's a good point. I guess there's no alarm system on the world of stuff. Like, are they are they such good customers that like they've been given keys? <laughs> because when they get there, it's not like a. Uh... Trip is waiting for them. Like he shows up late, a few minutes late, because he's nervous. Yeah, that's true. I mean, maybe, maybe there was like, you know, you're you're such a good customer. Here's the keys. You can come in and play Mutant War or whatever the fuck that that game was anytime you want. <laughs> I hate every time I think more about this episode. I'm like, wait, what? <laughs> but yeah, like she's dead. And then they look into the store, and we see the two ghosts hanging out because they're both dead now and they're both young now though you know trip's always been young too young honestly yeah uh, the baby tries to take their picture but they disappear before him because they're tricksters and her dead body's being driven <laughs> down the street and her <laughs> niece is going to be very sad and probably very upset at them because yeah that's going to be a weird years. that's going to be a weird situation with like oh i i thought that my so last night, this weird kid with a fake mustache on came up to ask me some questions for a survey, and then the next morning, I find out that my aunt is dead on the floor of a general store. This other kid came the day before and upset her greatly. <laughs> yeah. So we come back. We, we They're still there, and this place is open, and despite the dead body that was there earlier, and the girl that's that I'm not even sure we mentioned her. There's a girl. No, that we didn't. Yeah, Marshall is attracted to, which in air date he was into another girl. The last episode, but she left. She went off on she into left. the cemetery and probably got killed by the Grim Reaper. So, so this, he he's he's now you know 
dooming this ch- this person to death. And he's like, oh, earlier he said like he, you know, he, he didn't want to be weird. He wasn't gonna he, he wasn't gonna tell you know introduce himself to her. And then Simon was like, oh, you should do it. And he does it again. But we've learned from this episode you have to you have to be more more pa- you have to be more aggressive with your love else you could die <laughs> I from think I think the anytime. term is maybe proactive but like aggressive <laughs> and the ghost makes him appear on top of the bookcase to get her attention and they have a nice little chat and he introduces himself to her and her to him and then this is the last episode she's ever in. <laughs> yeah. So she's utterly unimportant. This does not no. work out. It it doesn't. Yeah. They they uh they meet and uh you know, it's a it's a good a good time. And then we get the closing credits um <laughs> which is just a shot from earlier in the episode where where Trip made the letter spin around on a table like it was a newspaper headline coming out of the darkness to tell you about you know some some business deal that's happening um but like it's the the letter just spins and spins as the credits roll and we get this really like slow sort of somber tone and it feels like the ending of a Twin Peaks episode which i have to think was intentional there are other Twin Peaks things this show has done. Yeah, for sure. So this, but this was the most on the nose. Yeah, in definitely. quite some time. But yeah, this, um, is, this is like I mean, I, I I complain a bit, but this was a good. This was a good episode. Um, yeah, it was I, fun. I never liked Marshall anyway. So like, if he's a dick and a, or a stupid a stupid asshole in any episode, it's just <laughs> par for the course. <laughs> Yeah, no, I I I enjoyed this one uh for the most part. Like I, I think it's it's pretty um it it was fun. It kinda like I said at the beginning, it it uh has that sort of classic ghost story vibe to it. So I think it kind of just it gives us something a little different, which is interesting because Erie Indiana seemed to be about giving something different to the audience. And so this going back to a more traditional story feels different for what Erie, Indiana has been up to this point. So I don't know. It was fun. It, it's simple, but it was interesting to see young Toby McGuire. Um, and I, another I, milk truck death and another milk truck death. Exactly. And we got this, we got this great new idea out of this episode. Goose flesh coming soon. <laughs> uh, <laughs> we learned about Ego chips coming and mayonnaise, which you sent me a fucking photo of, uh, <laughs> uh please, please, please. Uh, that is, Read to the audience. I sent you a picture of the label for Ego Mayonnaise. Yeah. I want you to read out loud what the net weight of <laughs> Ego, oh my Ego God. Mayonnaise. Holy shit. All right. So let me describe this. Ego, it's Ego brand, fun, like 50s, 60s era art, little, a little egg man that ha- with it wearing a little hat that says Mr. Ego on it. He's wearing a jaunty little blue like almost like a Donald Duck type outfit. Like he's wearing no pants, but he's got a shirt on and some weird muscular legs. <laughs> like <laughs> he, he, he has been doing a lot of squats. He definitely has. He, he, he looks like he's looks like a cowboy with some saddlebags on his sides. He's got these big thighs. Uh, it says finest quality mayonnaise, fun little font, fun colors. Got all the things that you would expect. Net weight, <laughs> oh my god, thirty pounds. <laughs> Why? 30 Why would you ever need thirty of pounds of mayonnaise? Man, that would get me through a Saturday night. I tell you what, <laughs> I mean, why? Why is it that much? How could it be less, my friend? <laughs> if you're making, if you're making a special batch of Echo Brand mayonnaise. Just for the fans. You gotta make a lot. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I guess so. I, I, I'm about to send you I'm about to send you a photo of and people just need to look this up. I'll, I'll maybe I'll put it in the uh episode description on Patreon. Check it out. Um, oh Mr. Ego. Mr. Ego in human form is uh very scary. He's wearing pants in this one because he has Thank to. You. <laughs> He's got a belt too to keep him on because they want to come <laughs> yeah. off. Yeah, but it, it that that person inside that mascot uniform must have been miserable. Oh my god! And well, the the best part is is that with the legs and pants and shirt, um, 
it's if you if you didn't know it was egos with the word ego, you wouldn't be certain if it really was an egg or if it was a clump baby. <laughs> Yeah, I, I think that's that's really an interesting story, though, to find out that Ego wasn't what they were originally called, and they just embraced people calling them that, and they were like, "Yeah, okay." So it's like, <laughs> it's kind of like, like if, if, it's like if it's it's like if Domino's Pizza changed its name to Garbage. <laughs> well, I was gonna say if uh, Disney leaned into everyone calling Baby Yoda Baby Yoda as opposed to no, 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 it's the child, the child, the child. <laughs> Like uh, the customers always Re- retroactively, they've gone back in and redubbed everyone. Going, uh, we must protect Baby Yoda. There's, there's, there's not going to be a name they can pick that will not make people ever call it anything besides Baby Yoda. <laughs> that this is true. Um, well, this episode was sponsored by the upcoming season of The Mandalorian, only on Disney Plus. <laughs> the Mandalorian, you won't last five minutes. <laughs> All right, that's the perfect place to wrap up this supersized episode of Center of Weirdness. 30 Thanks pounds as- of love right from this show <laughs> to you. <laughs> Thanks, as always, for supporting us over here on Patreon. We enjoy doing this show, and we are glad that you get to hear it. But until next month, when we are back with another episode of Center of Weirdness, talking about another episode of Erie, Indiana, I've been Josh. I've been a ghost the entire time. Oh, shit. You are blowing my mind. I never would have realized it until you told me. Uh, And keep it weird out there and enjoy your ego mayonnaise. All 30 pounds of it. (laughs)